everyone, welcome to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny and today I have a collage of freezer meals for you. So I did a, a video a while back on freezer meals and I will link that in the description box below for you as well. I do have a couple repeats from that video because I really like them. I'm not going to go through the making them with you today, but I'll just show that I freeze them and tell you what they are. But I do have other freezer meals that I haven't made for you before today. So, also, I did not do these all in one day. It is a lot of work <laughs> to do a bunch of freezer meals in one day. A lot of times when I'm making dinners, I make a couple more to freeze at the same time. That way, it's a lot easier. So I did this over a couple weeks. Um, just wanted you to know that so that you don't have to kill yourself to do them in one day. <laughs> Spread it out. Anyway, folks. Pull a chair up to my counter, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get started. It's gonna be a little bit. I am making funeral potatoes or hash brown casseroles, whatever you would like to call them. I have one small onion, and I am going to cut it small. Okay, one small onion. If you don't like a lot of onion, cut it in half. I have one can of uh, cheddar cheese soup. I like the cheddar cheese soup. You can use cream of chicken, cream of celery, cream of mushroom, whatever you like. Um, I love the cheddar Ed. I think it's so much better. And I've had it with the other. I used to make it with creamy chicken. But I love this. You can use your own homemade cream mix if you want. Six tablespoons of melted butter. One whole container of sour cream. So hash brown casserole or funeral potatoes or church potatoes. They all have a different, I mean, it's the same thing, but a different name for all of them. At least I think. I'm sure you all make this, and you already know. But um, it, let me know. Let me know what you call it and what you do differently. I am putting some black pepper in. half a teaspoon. I am going to put in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, and a half a teaspoon of paprika because we need some flavor in here. I need a bigger spatula. All my seasonings are on my spoon. I love this. And when I don't feel good, I always want potatoes. So I'm assuming I'm going to want some potatoes while I'm healing. Thirty ounces of hash browns. You can use the cubed or the shredded. I like the shredded. And then I go through and pick out all the dark pieces because I'm weird like that. It 
You can thaw these out if you want. You could do them frozen. I just do them frozen. Two cups of cheese. I'm using marble cheddar. I think the shredded potatoes with the shredded cheese mix in really well together. I used to always use the, um, the potato cubes, the O'Brien style. O'Brien? Southern? I don't know. Whatever they are. Southern style hash browns. I love those. But I, like, I like these better um, with the hash brown, with the church potato. I think I like them better shredded with the um, funeral potatoes. Plus leftovers take scoops of your leftover hash brown of your leftover funeral potatoes and for them. you can coat them in you know like make a potato cake out of it coat it in breadcrumbs and fry it and then serve it with your eggs oh my gosh i love that fried funeral potatoes i have a freezer pan my one-year-old granddaughter mutilated that for me so, you can give them a little spray, but these are just small pans, so I can do small amounts. Oh, there's another dark tida. That way there's enough for two people in these pans. So whether we eat them for breakfast or dinner. I'll make this one a little bit bigger so it can feed more. In case the kids come over. I'm not gonna put chopping on here. So this is what I found. I like to freeze it like this and then I can pull it out and change up the topping. Sometimes I like breadcrumbs, sometimes I like cheese, sometimes I like cornflakes, sometimes I like grits. It just really depends on my mood. Plus, I think the freezer makes it a little bit more soggy. I, do, I don't get the same crunch out of it, so no topping, freezing them like this. This one has a top. And of course, take the top off before you bake it. I am going to freeze them on this tray. I'm gonna put bake at 351 hour because he'll pull it out from the frozen state. Okay, I'm gonna stick these into the freezer on this um, so they freeze stable. I have a couple of containers here. I am gonna make a couple of um, tater tot casseroles. I forgot what I'm doing. A couple of tater tot casseroles. I have my beef here. Everybody makes their tater tot casserole a little bit different. It's been my experience. Some people put vegetables in theirs. I do not, actually. I am just going to take the plain unseasoned beef and press it into the bottom. You can season it up if you want to. My mom always did it this way, and I kind of just 
just followed how she did it. And I like to do it this way with pressing the raw ground beef into the bottom of the pan. Number one, your casserole is gonna cook longer and your tater tots are gonna get super crunchy. Number two, it, they cut in perfect squares this way. If you pre-cook your ground beef and sprinkle it in the bottom, you are not going to get that beautiful square cut of um, tater tot casserole. I mean, these are tiny pans, so I'm gonna kinda keep these small. But I'm just gonna make two of them because uh, when I am um, recovering, I'm, I'm sure I'm not gonna eat four tater tot casseroles. <laughs> Okay, I am going to do the salt, just like you would do a hamburger. Garlic powder. You can use your homemade garlic salt for this. A little bit of onion powder. and fresh cracked black pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some raw onions on here. Okay, super easy. I'm gonna use cream of mushroom soup. You can use cream of chicken soup, cream of cheddar soup, cream of celery soup. Use what you like. But this is how I do it. I'm gonna use half a can in each pan. I'm basically making the this half a pound of meat. So I use a full pound of meat, so a half pound in each. And then, um, half a can of soup in each. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. That's how I feel about this casserole. And by the way, I ran out of onions, so I chopped more. And I keep an onion bowl when I'm food prepping, and I know I'm gonna be using several, so that I only have to chop up onions once that day. So I kinda figure out what I'm gonna make and then do the onions that way. In my recipe that I did for you before, I used a Velveeta cheese in it. I actually prefer to use Cheese Whiz. And I've almost always used Cheese Whiz, but I, oh, I had Velveeta that day that I made that video, so I used that. And Velveeta is okay to use, too. Um, I never use cheddar. Some people like cheddar in this. I prefer the um, processed cheese, actually. I know, call me weird. Cheese Whiz just has like this salty goodness. I don't know what it is about Cheese Whiz and this casserole. But if you remember like back in the 80s, Cheese Whiz was a huge and um, my mom always used it. She made all of our dips out of Cheese Whiz too. <laughs> they were delicious. So I'm just kind of dalloping it on here. Um, for a large casserole, I probably use like three quarters of a jar. I never use the whole jar. Depends on how cheesy you want it, right? But this cheese is going to mix in with the soup. And then it's going to bubble up between the tots. It's going to be stinking delicious. Okay. Perfect. My tater tots are in. Um, putting the tater tots in, I stand them up because if you, you can do them either way, you can stand them up or you can lay them down. It looks better if you lay them down, but you get more tater tots if you stand them up on end. So that is what I do. By the way, tater tots are no longer affordable. I paid $6 for a bag of tater tots. Holy cow. Anyway, French fry sprinkle. I make this. I love it. I'm going to put French fry sprinkle over the top of my, um, tater tots. I will put my um, dry mixes for the mushroom powder and the french fry sprinkle in the description box below. That I'll link that video for you because it's so delicious. 
You'll never want to eat french fries without it. Anyway, I'm going to put my lids on. I got a couple of very full pans here. And then I'm just going to label it. And when I make this, remove cover and bake one hour at 350. Don't bake it with a cover on. If you bake it with a cover on, tater tots get funky. Like, they get soft and gummy. They don't get crispy. You can, however, bake it for half of the time covered and then take foil off and bake it the rest of the way. The next thing I'm going to make are two meatloaves. I have probably a pound and a half of meat left in there. I am going to add a teaspoon of parsley, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt, fresh cracked black pepper, Probably a teaspoon-ish, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon. My mushroom powder. It's like my favorite thing in the world right now, let me just tell you. So I'm gonna do one and a half tablespoons of mushroom powder. This does have the garlic and onion powder in it, but I wanted a little bit more for my meatloaf. And then I have this German brand um, all-purpose seasoning. I love this stuff. I am going to put in a uh, half a tablespoon Worcestershire sauce, a good tablespoon of Worcestershire, one sleeve of saltines, uh -huh, I almost forgot, onions. I use freeze dried or dried onions. I never use fresh onions. If you use fresh onions in your meatloaf, you're asking for trouble, they will fall apart. So a couple tablespoons of dried onions. Um, I also never put them in my meatballs. Fresh onions. Okay. One sleeve of saltines. You know what else is good in here? Cheez-Its. Love the Cheez-Its. Half and half. You can also use uh, heavy cream. But I'm going to put a good half a cup in there. Eggs. I've got three eggs here. It is a pound and a half. Had I used two pounds of beef, I would have put in four eggs and a shell. Don't forget your shell. Okay, I'm going to get this mixed up and put into my two little foil meatloaf pans. If you are using beef that is 93, you're definitely going to need the cream. So, don't forget it. There's nothing worse than a dry meatloaf. Except maybe some really dry cake. I don't know. That's no, that's no good either. Um, meatballs and meatloaf should be more custard-like. Okay, the meat will absorb both the crackers, or the meat and the crackers will absorb both the uh, milk and the egg. Okay, so I'm basically making like comfort style meals and meatloaf is definitely one of my favorite comfort meals. I love meatloaf and I make it in an array of different ways, uh, but this is more of my comfort favorite. Other than the mushroom powder is newer and I'm in love with it, so it makes everything taste better. I have got to go wash my hands. Okay, the topping that's going on my meatloaf so weird, I know. I am going to put ketchup in a bowl. A 
but I'm gonna mix my ketchups because I have jalapeno ketchup and this is a super, super spicy. So I'm only putting a couple tablespoons of that in. And then barbecue sauce. So a quarter cup of ketchup-ish, maybe, maybe a third a cup of ketchup. A third a cup of ketchup and a quarter cup of barbecue sauce. And then I am going to put in here some brown sugar. You do not have to do this. I like the topping sweet. And so does my husband. Okay. I had to microwave that. It didn't fit in my container, so my airtight container that um, I keep it all in is too full for that. So I had to microwave it to soften it up. You can throw some hot sauce in there, some cayenne, whatever you like on it. You can make homemade barbecue sauce. I haven't canned it in a while. I uh, <clears throat> love the homemade canned barbecue sauce. I just haven't had enough time to do it. Okay, foil on. Freezer paper on first, then foil. I just do the freezer paper as another layer of protection against freezer burn. Take it off before you bake it. But recover with a foil. Don't forget to write your directions. You know, like what it is, how long to bake it for, and to make sure to take off the freezer paper. Bake it 350 covered, 45 minutes, uncover, and bake 15 minutes. Okay. The next thing I'm making, I have three bags of chicken thighs. I was only going to do two in this flavor. I'm just going to do some Asian style chicken um, thighs um, with Asian flavors. Not all of them are going to be authentic because I'm putting some ketchup in here. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is with ketchup today. I like it. So in here, I am going to put three quarters of a cup of soy sauce. Since I have three bags of chicken, I already have ginger. I put, grated a couple tablespoons of fresh ginger. One cup of water. I'm putting sriracha in, this is optional. I'm gonna put a good tablespoon in. I love sriracha. Um, I grated the ginger, I thought I had garlic. I do not, I'm out of garlic, but I do have a bunch of Thrive garlic and this stuff is strong. So put in like six to eight cloves of garlic, but I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of dry. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm gonna put in a good quarter cup of ketchup. I'm gonna put in three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. You can use rice wine vinegar um, if you would like or apple cider vinegar, red wine vinegar, whatever kind of vinegar you have that you want to use. I'm putting in a half a cup of brown sugar. Again, my brown sugar is hard. <laughs> and I'm going to put in a quarter cup of honey. If you want to use all honey and no brown sugar, you can definitely do that. I'm not measuring, so... This is gonna, this is not gonna be a picky meal. This is going into the crock pot when I make them. I am putting in a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, maybe half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of cayenne. I like a little kick. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder, half a teaspoon. 
I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of onion powder. And I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of ginger. I can't ever get enough ginger. Soy sauce has salt, but I always find I need a little extra salt, so I'm putting in a half a teaspoon of salt. I poured it over here, let all the air out. Um, a lot of people like to lay theirs flat and freeze them so they fit in the freezer really well. And they do, and they look beautiful. Huh, I don't. I freeze them like this. Why? Because they fit in the crock pot better. It, nothing makes me more crazy than pulling something out of the freezer, and I will throw them in the crock pot or the um, instant pot um, frozen. I know they say you're not supposed to do that, but I do. So I prefer them frozen like this, and I stack them, and then I can throw them in my crock pot. Next up, burritos. I did this in my last freezer meal video, so I didn't show you the process this time. Um, I made these a little bit smaller this time um, with 10 inch, and <clears throat> I will link the other uh, frozen dinner video in the description box below for you, but also I will link my a video on Instant Pot um, beans, because that's how I make these. <clears throat> also, I want to say that some of these have my chicken taco meat in them, my home can chicken taco meat with the beans. I will put that in the description box for you as well because it's delicious. And then we had um, tacos the other night and family night. So I have one or I have several with leftover um, taco meat and that's just beef with my taco seasoning. <clears throat> I can also link that video in the description box for you with the taco seasoning. If I did one, I hope I did. Anyway, I got a lot of burritos here. And um, I think I have a little bit of, I had a little bit of leftover mashed potatoes. So some of these burritos got a little bit of mashed potato in them as well. Um, burritos are that fun thing that you can put whatever, that's too much, put whatever you want in them. And I, I will pack them with leftovers if I know I'm going to do freezer, freezer burritos. Whatever I have in the fridge leftovers go into burritos. And I just label them bean burritos and I should put a plus because some of them have potatoes, some of them have chicken, and some of them have the beef. And about half of them are just bean and cheese. But I will link the other uh, burrito video in there for you, or the bean video, how to make the beans. 30 burritos. They'll last about six months-ish in the freezer like this. Sometimes I wrap them individually for on the go, but um, since they're mainly for me for lunches and breakfasts, I have 30 burritos. I'm sure my husband will eat some too and the kids when they come over. But it's nice to make huge batch like this for the freezer because it took me... I don't know, 30 minutes to just fill them all and fold them. I forgot to add after I, I use this, um, these Amazon basics, they are in my kitchen must haves. I love these things. I rolled the burritos, put them on here, put them in the fridge for 24 hours and froze them. I'm sorry, put them in the freezer for 24 hours and froze them before I just packed them into plastic bags. Um, it makes it so much easier. Next thing I'm gonna make, um, oops, I got you back a little too far. Okay, I'm doing I'm doing cheater cheater stuff now, just to make it easy on myself. I buy ground beef in bulk, and so I package it into one pound freezer bags for my husband and I. Um, so I'm gonna do two of these Korean beefs. So into this, I'm oh I'm telling you that because I'm not throwing these out. I am just going to uh, pour the juice right on top and stick them back into the freezer. Juice? It's not juice. It's sauce. Whew. Jitis Lapidus. Half a cup of soy sauce. Half a cup of brown sugar. When I write this recipe for you, I will write it for one, which is half of all this stuff. This is so good. And this, I throw it right into the crock pot and I just keep breaking it up as it cooks. Um, and you, I just serve it right with, with rice. That's it. You can throw some vegetables in it. Um, I like broccoli with it, steamed broccoli on the side. I am going to put in 
sesame oil, four teaspoons. I am right to the very, yep, the very end. I might as well just throw the rest in there. I am going to put in two teaspoons of ginger. I'm using my little half teaspoon here because uh, my one teaspoon has oil on it. I'm putting in a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. I'm also gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt. The soy salt and so the table salt are two different kinds of salt. And some freshly cracked, freshly cracked black pepper. About a half teaspoon. I love this. Okay, here's the next thing. I need some fresh garlic, but instead of putting it in there and making sure it gets divided up evenly, I am going to put three, actually I'll do four, four cloves of garlic per, per bag. So I'm gonna take this garlic that I did and put it into this, this beef. I just wanna make sure all the nummy garlic gets in there. Okay, I have the garlic in the bags. I'm just going to make sure my sugar is stirred in well. And I'm gonna pour this right in, half of it. And it is going to freeze right away. So these will freeze together. I'm gonna to label these and get them right back into my freezer and then I will just dump them into my crock pot when I'm ready to cook them or instant pot. The last thing I'm gonna make, um, there were a couple other things I wanted to make in this video but didn't get the chance to. So I think I'm gonna do a separate video on making pizza pockets and ham pockets cause that's a whole big to do. So the last thing I'm gonna make is King Ranch chicken lasagna. So I love King Ranch chicken but my husband does not like corn tortillas, so he will not eat that. So I take that basic concept and turn it into a lasagna using pasta instead. He loves it. Um, so what I'm going to do is take cream of chicken soup. I am gonna do this the easy way. Again, I got a lot going on right now. And plus when I stocked up, I stocked up on cases of these soups. I now need to use them up. So I am finding all these nice creative ways of using these up. I am going to put the chicken soup and the um, cream of mushroom soup in here. And I think my cream of mushroom soup is a low sodium variety. Anyway, I don't have a problem using the cream soups. I do a lot of sauces homemade, um, but when these things go on sale, it's kind of nice to have for backup, especially when I'm doing like a busy freezer meal thing like this. It's kind of nice. Okay, I have one can of like Rotel, huh? This is the um, Aldi version of Rotel. I am going to dump the whole thing in. Also, I did drain it. I didn't want my sauce to be too watery. And I'm probably going to add um, my chicken broth. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of this cooking from my pantry right now. You see the price of stuff? Holy moly. I'm going to put a little bit in. I'll probably use the rest. Okay, let's do our seasonings. Cumin. I am going to use a teaspoon of cumin. I am going to use two large teaspoons of uh, chili powder. A quarter teaspoon of cayenne. 
two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, half a teaspoon of salt, I'm going to add in a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. That is my favorite smell. Oh my gosh. And fresh cracked black pepper. Okay, rest of my chicken juice. I'm gonna pour this out into um, another bowl so that we can flake it up a little bit, clean up this mess, and we're gonna get started putting them together. Okay, I have all my components. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of sauce in the bottom here. I just tasted it and it's so good. I could eat it with a spoon. And then when you go to melt, the cheese melts in with it. Oh, yum. I love King Ranch casserole, but I cannot get my husband to eat corn tortillas. But the funny thing is, if I make any anything homemade with corn, like pupusas or tamales or anything like that, he loves them. I don't know, go figure. Plus he eats tortilla chips. I am using straight up lasagna noodles not boiling them either what I do need to do is make sure they fit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I'm breaking a little bit off the edge I'll save those two on the bottom Oh my gosh, can you hear that? My dogs are eating the broken pasta that fell to the bottom. It's hard to tell exactly how much pasta to break off here. But if it's too short, you have all these little short pieces of pasta left, right? Bam. <laughs> Whatever they don't eat, I guess. So you don't need to pre-boil these because they will bake right up in um, after being frozen really easy okay after that we put a little bit more sauce down because these noodles are going to soak up this moisture Okay, chicken. I'm gonna sprinkle with chicken. These are gonna be so good. Onions. I'm gonna sprinkle some onions over the top, leaving them raw. And then I have uh, my home canned poblano peppers. I will link that in the description box below. They are here. Instead of cutting up jalapenos or anything fresh, I figure I just use up the stuff from my pantry. And these actually, um, normally uh, poblanos aren't spicy at all these actually have a little tiny bit of a kick so it will be delicious so I'm putting a little bit of those there but you can sprinkle a can of green chilies or you could cut up bell peppers whatever you like or jalapenos or both I just dropped that all over 
I do want to put a little bit of salt down over that for seasoning. And my salsa powder, the salsa powder I just dehydrated. Oh yeah. Again, my um, powder videos will be in, or I'll, I'll put link this in the description box below for you for the salsa powder. Extra flavor. I am all about flavor here. And cheese. Got to have the cheese. I am almost out of cheese. I used it all. <laughs> Next. So you can make this as cheesy as you want. I'm not going to go as strong with cheese because this, literally, I have this bag and another one left, and that is it. Okay. Next layer. This already smells amazing, by the way. You can also use those lasagna noodles that are no bakes. I have some of those too, but you know what? I'm gonna make regular lasagnas too for my freezer. By the way, I'm not doing a video, I'm not putting that in this video because I've already done that in my last freezer video. Sauce. Spread it out all over your pasta. Okay. More chicken. Good. I have a tiny bit left. I'm eating this for lunch today. Chicken salad. <laughs> Throw down some onions. Some of the peppers. Big 9 by 13. This recipe will make 9 by 13 exactly. if I can find this much pasta. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of salsa powder. I forgot to put it over the chicken, so it is going over the cheese. Yum, just a little bit of extra flavor. Okay. And then I have enough noodles to do one. I'm gonna piece it together. Okay, there's that. And then I have 
These no-bake noodles actually fit on here really well. These are usually what I use because they work so well with these things. And the rest of the sauce. Okay, I'm squeezing every last little bit of this out. <laughs> And the last of the cheese. And then I'm going to cover these, label them, and get them into the freezer. Okay, here they are wrapped up. And I wrote the directions on this one. I didn't the other two. I'm terrible at it. But I'm home all the time. So either I'll be throwing them in or if my husband or the kids have, have uh, questions, they can always ask me. But... If you have other people in your house that, that bake things, you're going to want to write your directions. I have freezer paper underneath here, and I have on here to remove the freezer paper, then cover and bake. Um, I'm going to make regular lasagnas also, and then I am done. And then pizza pockets, but I'm going to do the pizza pockets in another video with you. And then I am done with my freezer stock up for this month. So I hope you enjoyed this video of the freezer meals. And I will put a whole bunch of links in the description box for you, as well as knives I use, I, uh, my rate link for the knives that I use, and the other products that my Amazon kitchen must have. All right, there are the freezer meals for you. If a recipe is needed, I will link it in the description box below for you. Some of these are kind of throw together, not really, no recipe needed. Um, I will let you know that also in the description box below if there is something that I don't put a recipe out on. Um, otherwise, all the links are in the description box below. If I've used something in my kitchen that you're interested in, chances are I have put them in my Amazon link for kitchen must-haves, so check that link. Um, I try to include every piece of kitchen equipment that I use. Also, I have a little pantry section for spices and things that aren't usual and can be hard to find. Those are also in the pantry link. Knives, I use rated knives. That link is also in the description box below for you. And any of my Pampered Chef items that I use to make this video, that link is also in the description box below. I try to make sure I provide all the links so that you know where to get all these things. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.